Hi. Hello and welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and this image of perfection is my wife and my friend and my partner in crime, Nisha Salas Berry. She is a registered nurse, a certified breastfeeding consultant, and a health coach. So many letters behind my so name. So many letters. I got to get some more letters. Even I can't keep up. You do need more letters. I yeah. know, right? Welcome back. Welcome, everybody. I saw our moderators in the comments. If you see someone who has a blue wrench beside their name, don't ask me why YouTube chose a blue wrench as a symbol, but they are a moderator. They often will reach out and answer newbie questions uh, so that uh, we can cover more slightly more complicated questions and, and don't have to answer the same question all the time. So if you see a blue wrench, answer your question. They know what they're talking about. How are you doing? I'm doing you look like you're doing. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We're married, by the way, so just back off. Oh, Lord. Here we go. All right. I, uh, thank you, um, Fatima. I went back to the beginning here. Thank you, Mike. Before we get into it, uh, recap. Last week we missed Monday Night Live because we were in Austin, Texas at the Great Keto Convention. And we had a really good time. We met a lot of you in person. And we let, met some creators in the space that we had never met before, but have worked together, which is kind of a weird thing to do. Yep. Including Zane Griggs. Yes, yes. Zane and I wrote a book together, but we do just have it? met for the first time at KetoCon in Austin. It's in the box. Okay. Grab a copy and show everybody. So if you are over 50 or know somebody over 50, you don't want to be... Uh, making love to the recliner, the lazy boy, the sofa. You want to be kicking. That's what you want to be doing after 50. We wrote a book about how to do that. There's a link down in the show notes. It's on Amazon. Time. They will be doing an audible version. Yeah. They are setting that up currently, so yeah. uh, that will be coming. There's a paperback and a Kindle version available now, but the audible will be up in a month or two-ish. Amy says, Dr. Barry was the best speaker at KetoCon by far. Oh, thank you so much. Funny thank story. You, you. His slides didn't. Actually, yeah, I didn't actually. My roster. slides didn't go through. Yeah, that so. was his fault, to be clear. <laughs> my grievous fault. I think it went better. I'm glad yeah. that his slides messed up. Yeah, it was a yeah. good thing. Slides just get in the way sometimes. Angelic and I later say some said some people with autoimmune uh, conditions should avoid eggs. Um, some notice that eggs cause some inflammation. It's almost always the whites of store bought eggs. So the chickens that were fed improperly, treated improperly, they don't have the same uh, exact same biochemical nutritional profile as eggs that are pastured from happy hens who ate bugs and, and worms. And so most people can eat the yolks, even of the cheapest eggs, but some people have to buy pastured eggs or even try duck eggs, quail eggs, mm -hmm. goose eggs, um, robin eggs. Don't eat mockingbird eggs because they're the Tennessee state bird. Like everybody's favorite. Yeah. Well, I wonder what about uh, platypus eggs? That'd be weird. I don't that's know. Weird, yeah. I don't think I don't, can do don't it. eat platypus eggs. That's a that's a mammal. They're probably protected. I bet they're protected. <laughs> yes, yes. I think I'm almost caught up here. I just wanted to make right, sure we cool. didn't miss anybody. Uh, Sean, I there see I see that, but I don't see a previous question. And I went all the way back to the start. I'm Maybe uh, the moderators can look out for Sean's question and yep. tag me. And yeah, I'll, you I'll guys tag me in it and we'll we'll answer Sean's question. Oh, Joanna, this is a great question. She wants to know, is your new book good for women over 50? Yeah, absolutely it is. It's actually anybody who's 40 or older really needs this book because if you wait till you're 50 to buy the book and start implementing the simple tips and strategies we talk about, you, you're going to lose a lot of ground that it'll take you a while to gain it back. But if you start when you're 40, 45, 47, then you're off to a head start. And by the time you get to 50, you can be kicking ass instead of saying, Hey, I'm going to go get in the recliner and watch a game. But yes, for, for men, women, and you can actually play in the game. That's right. You can be playing football in the backyard instead of watching the game or worse, watching golf. <laughs> hey, Holly Crazy. Hey, Holly. Sheila says, my daughter is 16 and has been carnivore for three months. Cholesterol 350, triglycerides 66, HDL 75, LDL 262, non-HDL 275. Doctor is talking meds and referring us to a heart specialist. I'm freaking out. She's yep. slim and healthy. Yeah, Sheila, your daughter is almost certainly a lean mass hyper responder. Uh, there was a recent study published on people like her. Her triglycerides are exquisite. Her HDL cholesterol is gorgeous. 
Uh, her total cholesterol is higher, her LDL is high based on the, the current standards. But if she has a normal A1C and a normal fasting insulin and then the trigs and the HDL she's got, she's very healthy metabolically. And so it, the research is being done right now, but it's coming out. It looks like she's at no increased risk because of this. OK, but uh, you may if, if you're freaking out, if you're scared, I don't blame you a bit because doctors tend to scare the crap out of you. Go see the cardiologist. Let them do whatever testing they want to do. Uh, they may want to get a CAC score. She's her her score should be zero because she's so young. They may want to do some other testing. I think that's fine. But when it comes down to it, I want you to print out the study. You can actually go back, and I've got links to that study in my uh, several of my cholesterol YouTube videos. And take that study with you to the cardiologist and say, "Look, this is a known thing. Are you sure that she's at risk, or or is she just super healthy and, and a lean mass hyper responder?" And then watch his face go, what? Yeah. Um, and then you'll teach your cardiologist. Marsha has found Sean's question. So, okay. uh, Dr. Barry, I'm an owner and partner in a medical practice, a pharmacy specialist within. One of my patients is a daily alcohol drinker. He is ketovore and on a ton of vitamins. IHG won't quit. What are my options? IHG. Yeah. So, uh, with the drinking, I'm assuming, is what, what are your options? Your options are to try to get him to go to rehab. I mean, if, if he, I mean, if you've explained to him that alcohol is a toxin, there is no healthy amount of alcohol. The less you drink, the, that's better, but that's not good. You don't need to drink any alcohol. But if you can't get him to meaningfully cut down on the alcohol, then that may very well mean he's got a problem. And of course, you know, in the United States, people over the age of 21 can do whatever the hell they want to do. So he may not want to go to rehab. You may just have to do what we very often do is do the best you can explain it, give him the rationale, give him the science, and then say, okay, brother, this is your choice. If you, if you want to keep doing this, I'm telling you, you're harming your health. You are informed. And if you want to keep doing that, that's your right. You get to destroy your health. That's what I would, exactly what I would do. Elizabeth, hey, Elizabeth. keto baby led weaning question. What supplements, vitamins do you give your babies, if any? Uh, nurse practitioner ordered six month old multivitamin fluoride. Yikes. Yeah. Mm. Even vitamin D3 from Big Pharma has sugar and corn oil, giving children D3 drops now. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. Supplements and vitamins for the baby. So Bonnie is nine months old. She eats super well. The only thing she supplements with is booby milk. And uh, she is self-weaning, it seems like. Yeah. I take vitamin D3 so that I can give her vitamin D3 through my breast milk so she doesn't mm -hmm. have to take the drops. Also iodine and minerals. Also iodine and minerals I take and it's given to And her when you're getting enough milk. of those in the mother's diet, the breast milk is going to be rich in that stuff. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have to take anything. Beckett, however, <laughs> is three and is asserting his independence and autonomy and some days... I am confident that he is not getting the, AKA acting like his mama. Uh -huh. Just put that in there. Um, you know, adequate nutrients because he wants to put his foot down and say, no, I just want goat milk. Like he currently hates eggs. Cooked Even though anyway. he used to love them and yeah. eat them all. The time. <clears throat> uh, so I do have a multivitamin. It's from the company. Hi. Yeah. H I Y A. No sugar, no coloring, uh, no carbs. It's, not perfect, but it is the best multivitamin option that I have found. I'm actually working on getting a discount code from them. So if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, one of my next videos is going to be about baby leg weaning, supplementation, and all of that stuff. Um, but it is the best one that I have found. But optimally, at some point, I would like him to just get yep. his multivitamin from his meat yep. and his, you know, veggies that he likes and, and berries and nuts. and. Yep. And eggs. I would like them to eat yeah. eggs again, but three-year-olds. <laughs> yeah. And so we have some vitamin D3, K2 drops that have no sugar. They're in either coconut or olive oil. And he still drinks lots of goat milk, Elizabeth. And so uh, about one bottle a day of his goat milk, I'll put about 2,000 international units of vitamin D3 in the winter. Now, in the summer, he literally is outside naked all the time. Literally naked. And when I say naked... I mean, literally. I put clothes on him. He takes them off. Yeah, he I loves to, to be in naked in the sun. So he's off. getting plenty of that. But also, I'll put a, I'll put a drop of the daily awesome. minerals. No, I'll put a, a couple of droppers full once a day, so that he's getting some minerals that also has some iodine in it. So iodine and vitamin D. If they're eating their meat and eggs, that's all you really need to worry about. 
Ashley. Hey, babe. Six hey, months, Ashley. a lot of been free. Huzzah! <laughs> she deserved that. You both look great. I, I think maybe you look great, mm -hmm. Ashley. I love that you go into mindset conversations. That has saved my life. Love you both. Uh, we love you too, Ashley. So, so proud of you. You better be proud of yourself. She is. She's working on it. Hey, Afro Abomination. I think your question didn't get put in there. Ezra, can carnivore lower my hematocrit as a testosterone user? I donate blood frequently, but it is out of range every time I go to donate. No, it's not going to lower your hematocrit. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not going to raise it in an unhealthy fashion, but it's very common for some guys when they're using testosterone replacement therapy for their hematocrit. To, to it, what it does is it spurs your bone marrow to make lots of extra red blood cells. And if you're eating carnivore, you're going to be getting plenty of iron and B12 and all the other stuff to make red blood cells. And sometimes it causes you to make a few too many. So um, just donate blood three, four or five times a year. And if, if your hematocrit's ever so high that you can't donate to the Red Cross, go see your doctor and they can do, they can do a, a viv section or a venous section, or they can just do a phlebotomy take a unit of blood off and discard it. And once you get your hematocrit down to acceptable levels for the American Red Cross, then you just go regularly every two or three months and get blood and that keeps it down. Sophia, uh, my remnant number is 18. All my metabolic numbers are good too. Is remnant an important number? Somewhat, but it's not a huge deal. If all your other metabolic markers are beautiful, don't worry about that. Carnivore werewolf. Hey, hey. dude. It was great getting to meet both of you and take a picture at KetoCon. I was wondering what your thoughts on polysorbate 80 were. It's in pretty much all pickles except the yeah. organic ones. Is the safe thing? Yeah. It's a preservative and it's not ideal. Uh, ideally, your grandmother would make your pickles for you like your Granny Berry makes for us. She doesn't put any polysorbate 80, 80 in, in there. But now this is one of those. So you have to all, everything that you think is a problem in your life. And this applies to everything. 80% of the time, there's a few problems that are 80% of your problem, right? So this much, that's that's 80%. But I think polysorbate 80 probably is not perfect. Maybe a problem, but it's a little 1% problem. Also, very, make sense? very easy to make your own pickles. Yeah, absolutely. Make your own pickles, werewolf. Jim to read. 100 pounds down in 18 months. Huzzah! Yes, the Renaissance Fair is coming up. So we're really working on No counting, no exercise. We just became legal here. Ah, uh, be careful. You get the munchies. So I have been eating too too many pork rinds, but I think that's okay for now. Yeah. And if you're gonna cheat with something, if you cheat, if you have some snack, carnivore snacks that are clean, and, and my, in my opinion, pork rinds cooked in lard or beef tallow, they're completely clean. They're fine. But don't smack snack too often. Have your pork rinds as part of your meal. Kidavor, Karen, how much does a CGM device cost if you don't have insurance? Uh, in my video about CGMs, uh, Karen, there's two companies where you can buy one or lease one from two companies. It's, it, the link's in the show notes of my CGM video. Uh, and I don't know the exact price. I think now that it's it's around 150 bucks. Yeah, that's what Is I'm that saying. about what you've seen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what I would recommend if you buy it, use it for a month because you don't need to wear it forever. All you need is to just learn which foods spike me, which foods don't spike me. And after a month of using it, you're going to know that. And then you can give it to your mama or your best friend or your daughter, right? You can gift it and then keep it going so that they can learn from it as well. Olivia, best diet for mm. pregnancy. Uh, so we have a friend and her name is Lily Nichols and she's written two books. One is called... It is called I think Low it's right Carb for Pregnancy. No, it's called something. something else. I just had a brain fart. Lily Nichols. L I L Y. Yeah. And she Nichols. has one about gestational diabetes and then real food pregnancy. That's, That's it. it. That's right. Um, highly recommend getting that book and using it as a guideline. Now, with that being said, you can go all the way to carnivore and have a keto, fantastic ketobor, carnivore. pregnancy. Yep. You can do ketobore and have a fantastic, healthy pregnancy. Keto healthy pregnancy, low carb, healthy pregnancy. Yep. What can you sustain? What's realistic for you? And also aversions. A lot of women have meat aversions in the first trimester. So cut yourself some slack, maybe use a protein shake to make sure you're getting adequate protein yep. and, you know, take the folate supplements and the vitamin D3 and yep. iodine and those types of things. Um, but it's a spectrum. 
but don't think that carnivore is dangerous or keto is dangerous. I've had two keto pregnancies. One was very meat based, Bonnie, my last pregnancy. The kid won't stop. She's, she's <laughs> off the curve on everything, everything in a good way. Yeah. So Lily Nichols book, it's real food pregnancy. Real food pregnancy. It's low carb, but it's mm -hmm. it's real whole one ingredient foods, which I, I you don't need to be eating any processed food at all, Olivia. Uh, that's not going to give you the nutrition, but Nisha is absolutely right on ketovore or carnivore. If you're, if you're eating lots of egg yolks with your meat and you're eating different kinds of meat and hopefully pastured meat, if you can afford it, you're going to be getting all virtually all the nutrition you need to build a beautiful, intelligent baby. Yeah, Bonnie says hello already. Yeah, Bonnie says hello and post a picture of that baby when it gets here. Yeah. Keep us updated, Olivia. And, uh, Find me on Instagram. It's at Nisha underscore Salisbury. If you yep. have any questions, feel free to message me on there. And if you've got more questions about that, you can actually join our private community. Or you can do that. Right. There's a link down in the show notes that says join our community. And for five bucks a month, you've got access to Nisha and I and multiple extra live Q&As each and every week. Within reason. There's a lot of people coming in there now. <laughs> VJ, uh, you didn't post a question, dude. Thanks, VJ. Artist, 28-year-old male, have symptomatic gallstones. What are your views on gallbladder flush? Also, yep. I hilariously have chicken pox. <sighs> Man. Have had it for four weeks. Any insights on that? Yeah. Thanks. And I love the triple B and E. Oh, great triple B and E song. So you're, you got chicken pox. It, it is a viral illness. It's self-limited, especially in adults. You're going to have itchy bumps. And then if you don't, you don't scratch them because it'll make the scar worse. See that right there? Got one too. That's a chicken pox okay. scar because I would hide from Granny Berry and, <laughs> and Granny would come around the corner and be like, I told you not to scratch that. I couldn't help it, it itched. Also, for me, it was just that there was a bubble there and I wanted to pop it. No long term problems with that. Um, now, the gallstones. I would try every gallbladder flush out there. Don't spend money, okay? There's literally 400 gallbladder flush YouTube videos that you can watch and try for free. But there's a ton of people out there trying to sell one for 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Guess what? They're the same ones that are on the YouTube videos for free. Just do, try that. But anything. And also high fat carnivore. Uh, in many cases, we've had people reach out and say, my kidney stone, I mean, my, my gallstones got smaller and went completely away. So don't have that gallbladder taken out unless you get a stone trapped in the cystic duct and you're having a 10 out of 10 pain gallbladder attack. Then you got to have it out. Because your daddy. Because your daddy. Thanks. Matthew, Dr. Esplin. Es Esseltine. Esseltine. Yep. Talks about veganism being best for folks with heart risk. I'm not comfortable trying vegan. I would love your opinion. I don't want to give up my meat. Yeah, I actually have Dr. Esselton's uh, book uh, and then a smaller book that he wrote. Uh, I think he was very earnest and sincere and completely wrong about this. Uh, the research that vegan doctors cite as reversing heart disease, basically what they did, they took a very small number of people and they put them on a vegan diet, but they also made them stop smoking. They also made them start doing meditation. They also made them start exercising. So there's multiple variables that were changing, not just so. So the way to do a study would be you just put them on a vegan diet, don't change anything else. Then that way you can actually research, did the vegan diet do this or not? And then also with the, the scans that they were doing, there'd be like maybe a 2% improvement or a 3% improvement. It's a very minuscule improvement, but they they can technically say we reverse. But they, when I say reversed, but like reversing type 2 diabetes, I don't mean we improved your A1C slightly. I mean your A1C is normal whereas before it was high. And so when we talk about reversing heart disease and stuff, we're talking about a complete reversal. But what the vegans mean is, oh, it improves somewhat slightly. And that is technically a reversal. So there's no research that shows that a vegan diet is the best diet for somebody with pre-existing heart disease. You need to eat a proper human diet, Matthew Ryan. Oh, carnivore crisps. <laughs> These two were rock stars in well, Keto Last Corona, night, Rector, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. Our friend made us, made us some carnivore tuna salad with, mm -hmm. what was it, chosen mayo? I was fixing to say I have a guilty, have, I'm guilty of something. I got to confess. And too. we dipped the carnivore crisp. I was dipping bison and she was dipping uh, chicken breast. No. Oh, no. It was the skins. And they sent oh, me the big bag yeah. and it is, it was gone in yeah. like 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. We ate that up. So. I was going to share that with you guys on my channel, but well, 
they're gone. Thank you, John. Oh, discount code Barry, by the way. If you guys like Carnivore Crisp, you can use that every time you purchase. Nice. Oh, it's not just the first no. time. Oh, that's nice. I know. Mark, newbie down 15 pounds in 14 days. Awesome on PhD. AM glucose was 195 plus, but 95 for the last week. Had a gastric sleeve in 2011 and can't seem to eat a lot of feed because of the smaller stomach. Is this okay? Yeah. Anybody who's had row and Y, any kind of bariatric surgery that made their stomach smaller, you may not be able to eat one meal a day, but you can absolutely eat a carnivore diet, a ketovore diet, or a keto diet. What you do is you eat three or four smaller meals within a six hour or eight hour feasting window. And since your stomach's smaller, you're not going to be able to eat as much. So you, you're not going to get nutrition that you need if you just try to eat one or two meals a day. Eat three, eat four, eat five meals a day, but eat them in a time-restricted window so that you're still fasting for 16 or 18 hours a day. And you're going to get tons of benefits from this. Randy's watching from hey, Paris, neighbor, Tennessee. how's it going? Demetrius, good advice on finding butcher who sells chicken skins. I know, right? Pound is $2. Love it. What's your feeling on eating jicama? Tennessee knows barbecue. What sauce y'all use for ribs? Low carb is hard with sauce and ribs. Yeah. Um, I would love if you could tell me a butcher who's selling chicken skins because yeah. I don't yeah. know one. I get mine from Carnival yeah. Chris or I make my own. Um, what's your feeling on eating jicama? Yeah, jicama is, is high in carbs. Yeah. It's very tasty. It makes great French fry type things. You can also slice it up and use make it chips. to dip things with. Yeah. But it's it's too high in carbs. Yeah, I would and do meat skins or pork rinds yep, and yep. blue or carnival crisps. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, also, what sauce do we use for <clears> ribs? <throat> so Melissa, our friend, has a blog called Cooking Keto with Faith dot com. Maybe one of the moderators can link post the, the link. Notes. Oh, there's a link in the show mm -hmm. notes. Um, and they have a really awesome dry <clears> rub. <throat> now. We also use the vinegar based sauce from Martin's Barbecue because it is fairly clean and it's under one gram of carb for like a, two tablespoons or something. And you don't need that much if you're not pouring it all over. Yeah. It's vinegar based. So when we go to Martin's, I use that one. He does the dry rub. And like I said, Melissa's dry rub is so good. You don't even need sauce. Yeah. And also, the more you eat meat and eat carnivore, the more you just enjoy the flavor of the meat. Now, uh, speaking of the butcher, I want every single one of you guys, all 3,415 of you guys, to go and talk to your butcher and say, hey, will you please start getting in chicken skins or your meat uh, department manager at your supermarket. Please start getting chicken skins. Please start getting all the cuts of meat. You can ask them for that. You don't have to just buy what they've got. When enough of you guys ask them to get chicken skins and they're like, damn, there's a market for chicken skins. Guess what they're going to do? I don't know why they're, they're going to get chicken skins. It. Yeah, because not enough of you guys have asked yet. You got to ask they're and be persistent. They're throwing them away. Yep, they're throwing away trillions Money. of them a year right. because they think nobody wants them. Everybody wants skinless chicken. You can also, I buy the huge thing of chicken thighs and I take the skin off myself and stick them in the air fryer with a little Redmond mm, sea salt. When you do Redmond that. sea Jeez. salt. Redmond salt. Yep. So it good. is sea salt, but just ancient sea salt. Oh, well. yeah. uh, Jay Pritch started carnivore last November to address my GI issues. Want to try fasting or oh my God, but concerned because my BMI is 20. Yep. How can I gain <clears throat> a little weight? So if you want to gain muscle, uh, Jay Pritch, you're going to start lifting heavy things. You're going to start working out. You can do push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks, uh, body weight squats, or you can buy a few dumbbells, or you can join the gym, whatever your wallet will allow you to do. But there's only two ways to gain weight. You either gain fat or you gain muscle and bone. That's your only two options. So if you're like, well, I just want to gain fat, start eating more carbohydrates. Highly processed carbs, you'll put on fat all over the place, including in your liver and your pancreas. But if you'd like to put on muscle and bone strength, you're going to eat fatty red meat, eggs with the yolk, and you're going to lift heavy things. And you're going to do that consistently, and you're going to put on muscle, and you're going to make your bones stronger, and that's going to show up on the kid, on the bathroom scale. And you'll be, there you go, you gain weight, and you didn't get unhealthy. But uh, probably long-term fasting, you don't, you need, don't to need to do with a BMI that. of 20. Yeah. And you don't need to do so <clears throat> mad. I would do more alternate day fasting, maybe, or with a fasting window to yeah. start out with. What, like, <clears throat> why do you want to fast? Yeah, maybe do two meals a day today, OMAD tomorrow, two, one, two, one, two, right. one, okay. something like that. And I don't blame you for wanting to get that daily intermittent fast in for autophagy and mitophagy and all the other benefits. But you don't need to be doing a three, five, seven day fast with a BMI of 20. You just don't need to do it. Titans play. Are you from Nashville? Pro insulin level, 
9.1 is that high? Well, that's a pro insulin level. Uh, so I'm not sure what the cutoff is for higher normal, but an insulin level, if that's what you meant to put in, uh, 9.1 is, is okay. That You want it to be definitely under 10, but ideal or optimal would be under five. But 9.1, if you're talking about an insulin level, that's pretty, pretty good. You're better than 99% of the U.S. adult population. Uh, we have to give a shout out to Mitzi's mom, Rita, who's watching tonight. Hello, Miss Rita. Oh, Miss Rita, hello. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. And let's go ahead and, and give a shout out to Granny Berry. She's of watching course. tonight. She lives in Alabama with my parents. She's 93 years old. I misspoke yeah, yeah. and I got a phone call at 730 <laughs> in the morning and got my ass chewed by Granny Berry for saying that she was 94. She said, I don't want those people to think I'm old. So Granny Berry is 93. Could you please say hi to my 93-year-old grandmother and where you're watching and from? And still sassy as all. Yes. Get out. Chewed it till it was bloody. Rod, thanks for the super hey, Rod, sticker. Thank you. Arthur, what are your thoughts on supplements? I don't know. Natokinase for relieving <laughs> blood clots and for reducing blood pressure. If you're eating a proper human diet, or Arthur, it's it's probably a complete waste of money. If you're eating just a highly inflammatory, high carb standard American diet, it may it may be worth the money. But if you're eating PhD, you don't you need to be spending your money on high quality meat and eggs. Sherry says white oak pasture sells chicken skins. Uh, you didn't tell I me didn't that. I didn't know that. We have a discount code for white oak pastures yeah. in the description. There's a link in the show notes. Oh, Absolutely. So they sell them. High quality pasture <clears throat> raised yep. regenerative farm. They're in Georgia. So support a local farmer and order some chicken skins. From Jim Churi, when I eat fruit or small amount of sugar after a long period of abstinence, months at least, I wake up in the night with leg cramps. Yeah, when you eat sugar, it causes electrolyte shifts and fluid shifts in your body. And Nisha Salas Berry can tell you this as well. When we go to Puerto Rico or to or San Antonio, Puerto Rico. Yeah, but yeah, that's right. And she eats too many of the Puerto Rican carbs and, and, and junk. She'll get leg cramps. And but I take my electrolytes and my minerals and yep. it helps. Over. She'll come hopping out of the, the bedroom on one leg and she'll stop and look at me and say, I don't want to hear it. And then she'll go and get some, some daily minerals for her cramp. Mm. Yeah. I talk about this on my channel. If you want to hear what I cheated on keto with, keto bore with, go watch that video. Yeah. And you can find out. Uh, Kathy says, Nisha, are you coming out with a cookbook? I have the holiday cookbook, but would love your recipes in one area. That's yes. a great idea. It is a great idea. You, would you guys love it if Nisha wrote another cookbook? Because her and Kim Houchin already wrote one. There's a link. It's called The Festive. But it's not keto for. That's right. It's it's more for holidays. That's mm -hmm. why a festive is in the name. But a daily ketovore with the spices mm -hmm. and with the little veg here and there. If I could talk and tell you. I mean, that's a great idea. Don't you guys want her to write that book? Tell, please tell me in the comments. I want so to I'm working on it. It's a ketovore slash baby led wing <laughs> book. Ooh, that's a is good idea. No, I think he is working out here. Oh, okay. We have somebody working on it. We're getting security, security cameras, cameras. Uh, put up because... More. A reason, yeah, yeah. So, um, so what was I saying? <laughs> that I totally threw you off. Cookbook that slash, I was saying that. Go ahead. I'm just ketovore kidding. slash baby led weaning, and it's going to be called. Yes. Nisha cooks it. Put some bacon on it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Put some bacon on it. Or something. Slap to some bacon on it. Or a bacon Khaleesi or ketovore Khaleesi. Oh, <gasps> ketovore Khaleesi. Queen of ketovore. I like that. Maybe that. Oh, mad scientist says, what's your opinion on BPC-157? Yeah, uh, it's probably not worth your money. I'm, I'm reading about this and several other of the kind of biohacking things right now. Uh, I haven't seen anything compelling that makes me think any of you guys need to be wasting your money on this. Uh, Sean, oh, could other help, supplements help with the alcohol? So there's actually several research studies being done right now, Sean, showing that when somebody is keto, ketovore carnivore, their withdrawal symptoms are much less severe. They have to use benzodiazepines much less often in the withdrawal process. They don't have DTs nearly as often if they're eating a proper human diet. So that's all the more reason if, if it turns out that he does have a drinking disorder, then if he'll convert to keto, ketovore or carnivore, high, higher fat, before he tries to wean down and stop, it's going to be much easier for him to wean down and stop. Uh, have you hit the thumbs up button? Have you shared this video with a friend? Because if you haven't, we'd love for you to because that helps us reach new people who have never heard of this way of eating and maybe suffering from 
metabolic health issues, infertility, depression, anxiety. Yes. The list goes yes. on and on. Help us. Help, help the world. Those people. Absolutely. Hit that little share button. I think it's right down here somewhere. It's down there somewhere. Yes. John, my wife has started keto She's 53 and 101 pounds. She's concerned she will lose mm. weight. Can she do keto carnivore without worrying about losing weight? Absolutely. How's she going to do that? You're going to make sure that you are eating plenty of healthy animal protein and Good animal fat. fats. Yes. And do not restrict your portions, madam. Mm -mm. Eat to your full. Eat to your full. Eat when you're hungry. Yep. And go lift some heavy stuff. Heavy to you doesn't mean you have to go, you know, bench right. press 500 pounds. Don't let Just, your husband spot you. Okay. <laughs> you do it, take care of this yourself. Just get out, lift some rocks, throw some stuff in the yard. You don't need any fancy equipment. Just lift some heavy things, start walking. And you should be good to go. I've yep. been eating the same way for three, four years yep. now. Uh, and my weight has maintained the exact same. Mm -hmm. I'm about the same weight that I've been like. Before I'm you had Becky. Yeah. yeah. So she eats two meals a day. And I would Sometimes recommend you three. not. Yeah. So I would recommend you not do OMAD. Eat two meals a day, mm -hmm. uh, John's wife. <laughs> and if you are get hungry, right. eat a third meal. It's totally fine because you're not going to gain fats by eating a proper human diet if you eat until you're you're full and you only eat when you're hungry you don't let eat when you're bored or when you're mad or when you're tired uh you're not going to gain fat but you're also not going to lose bone and muscle uh they made them watch a commercial in the middle of this what yeah sorry we about will that, fix guys. that I'll fix sorry that. i don't I'll know that. what the heck youtube's trying to make some money cynthia new carnivore but have been craving tomatoes with bacon and mayo yep. is this really bad and something i should stop even if it's only once in a while very good question that's a great question so if if you are not a carboholic a sugar addict and you can have to a blt occasionally i think it's not a big deal cynthia the fact that you are craving tomatoes Right. And bacon. As opposed to Lucky Charms. Huzzah to you, yeah, Matt. Or Danishes. Now, I will say your mayo, I'd love for you to be making your own. It's very yeah. simple, very easy, very cheap. You can buy some that's truly made with good ingredients. Most that say avocado oil on the front actually have canola oil in them. So you check read the, the labels. Yes. But it's super easy to make your own mayonnaise using mm. avocado oil, olive oil, uh, bacon, grease or butter and there we have a video on how to make it with bacon grease so we need to remake that video uh and two crazy ketos has the <clears> best <throat> butter mayo recipe out there so. you know in england they, they say butter do they you don't want to tell that story i would that i'm gonna save that for another day <laughs> you can tell that on your channel mm -hmm. yeah that's a funny thing i did that she thought was incredibly hilarious <laughs> that's still funny to this day <laughs> That was like eight years ago. Jerry De Leon, triglycerides 182, total cholesterol 303, HDL 48, LDL 219, uh, A1C 5.6. Doctor want me to put me on a statin. Should I do it? Been ketoboard for more than a year and have lost 30 pounds. Says, oh, well done, Jerry. Uh, so your HDL is 48. That's still a little low. And your uh, triglycerides are 182. That's still a little high. So taking a statin, or Repatha or Prowuant, they're not going to lower your triglycerides or raise your HDL. I want you to cut the carbs more, okay? I know you, you, you've you been eating Ketovore-ish, but if your triglycerides are still 182 and your HDL is still 48, you need to eat more fatty red meat, more egg yolks, and you need to cut the carbs down some more. Get these rechecked in three months. Watch my videos about it, how low of an LDL is dangerously low. Also, how not to die of a heart attack. And you'll start to quickly realize that it doesn't matter what your total cholesterol and your LDL is if all your other numbers are perfect. Thank you, Kathy. Your question didn't get posted. Sorry. Uh, YouTube. You, Google how to do a super chat if you've never done it before, before you do it so you're not wasting your super chat. GP. <clears throat> Six months strict carnivore cholesterol and BP are normal. BMI of 23. Doctor just ordered me a cardio IQ advanced lipid panel with APOB mm -hmm. and anti cardiolopin. Lipin. Mm -hmm. Blood Lipin. test. Is there any value in taking these? Uh, if you're a data geek and you do like, yeah, I'd like to know what they are, then go ahead and get them checked. Um, you're, you're worrying your doc because you're eating a proper human diet, even though it shouldn't worry your doc. But it, you're fine to refuse these if. All, like you, if you did, you say that uh, BP is normal. Is your A1C normal? Your fasting insulin, triglycerides, HDL, 
if they're all normal, then you can safely refuse these tests. Uh, you might want to get the ApoB. This is something that Peter Atia talks a lot about. I disagree with him on a, on almost everything he says about ApoB, but he's a very smart guy. So get it checked just to have it in your records. Uh, the anti-cardiolipin blood test, that's eh, probably a waste of time and money. The cardio, cardio, cardio IQ, maybe. Uh, it's up to you. Optional. Mary, 65 years old, five years keto. That's awesome. 70 pounds down, younger than when I was 40. Nice. She's had a screaming high lipase result. <clears throat> face was 20 to 82. Mine was 244, but right mm. back to normal. Any idea why? Yeah, this might need to be investigated a little further, Mary. It may have been just lab error. Uh, you could have been exposed to something that, that pissed off your pancreas just a smidge. But uh, this needs to probably be investigated. I'd probably want to get a, a, a pancreatic ultrasound at least just to make sure that your pancreas, it looks fine because uh, tumors in the pancreas, some kind, sometimes they can stutter. And so they'll cause a high lipase uh, uh, or a uh, amylase, but then they'll go back down to normal. And that happens for a while. I'm not saying you have a tumor. I'm saying just get an ultrasound, get a few extra tests done just to make sure that it was just a one-time thing and no big deal. Kane wants to know why Dr. Barry can't wear flip flops. I don't want to wear flip flops. It's a more him thing than me. Yeah. If if my only option were to wear flip flops or go barefooted, I would just would suck it up and get calluses. No, yeah. Devout carnivore, is there any validity to the claim that saturated fat is more inflammatory to people with APOE4? APOE4, yeah, maybe, but probably not. The research on APOE4 is not in any way deep enough or wide enough as in been going on for enough years for us to know definitively is this a marker that actually matters or not uh so and now you said the claim that saturated fat is more inflammatory probably not at all but it may be that people with apoe4 need to adjust their diet a little bit but probably not. I think this is one of the many markers like TMAO and all the others that they tried to scare us with. You know, first it was total cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, that's dumb. Stop talking about that. And then it was LDL. And it's, now it's APOB and APOE4. I think that if we just keep eating a proper human diet, all of these little faddish tests like this will just go away because we'll all be healthy. Thanks, Thank you, Steve. Steve. What's up, Kathy? Sean, we got you. Oh, so can CBD maybe, or DA help with the alcohol? Maybe, but um, obviously we don't want to replace one addiction with another addiction. Mm -hmm. And well, he's, if CBD it and is, DA aren't really addictive. Uh, right, but if it is really an addiction, then obviously we want to be careful with any other substances. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a, that that might help with the withdrawals a little bit. Laura, my doctor refused to switch me from armor to leave with thyroxin. Any suggestions? Find a new doctor. Also, remind him that he works for you. That's right. Yeah. Now, a good trick is to call a locally owned pharmacy, not Walgreens or Walmart, but a locally owned pharmacy and say, hey, who's a doctor around here who prescribes Armour Thyroid? And a, a local pharmacist will be like, oh, that's Dr. So-and-so. He's over on Smith Street. Then you can tell your doctor to go to HE Double Hockey Sticks and go see Dr. What's his name over on Smith Street? Jenna? Adult daughter has cerebral palsy. A one C is five point five. Her glycerides HDL ratio is one point zero five. I was shocked that her C reactive mm -hmm. protein is fourteen point six four. She is not yet carnivore, but has been completely off all grains and all added sweeteners. That's great. Good That's step awesome. in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. So the C her C reactive protein or CRP is elevated. Now the problem, the good thing about CRP is very sensitive. If there's any inflammation in the body, it's going to tell you by being elevated. But if what, the bad part about CRP is you don't know why. She could have an infected uh, pimple on her thigh. She could have an ingrown toenail. She could have a, a, a nail that she's bitten a little too close. She could have a little rash somewhere. She could have, or, or she could have heart disease. Like you literally don't know why the CRP is high. Uh, so it, it, it's, if she's, it sounds like you're doing very well with her diet. That's awesome. Uh, you may even notice that her CP symptoms decrease slightly, if not significantly. But, uh, and then also, does she need to go carnivore? If she's amenable and she's agreeable, then I think that's fine. Uh, but it may not be necessary. Debbie, you need to email help 
at mightynetworks.com and they can help you. Uh, you should have wrote down your email and your uh, password when you signed in and that's all you need to get in. But if you're having difficulties with that, Mighty Net Networks has a help desk. It's help at mightynetwork.com. Cat. Hey, Cat. Dr. Barry, what do you know about restless leg syndrome? Well, I, I know I know enough about it that I made a YouTube video about it. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I have this as my legs feel weird in the evening when sitting and when I go to bed. Uh, it's it's a very common condition. Did you know, fun fact for you, uh, before the 90s, there was no such thing as a diagnosis of restless leg syndrome. The doctors didn't talk about that. It wasn't in the books. The, this diagnosis was basically invented by a pharmaceutical company who just so happened to have a drug that would help with this new diagnosis of restless leg syndrome. What the vast majority of people find cat diamond is that when they adopt a very low carbohydrate, uninflammatory, proper human diet, that the restless leg syndrome goes either completely away or gets so much better that it, it's ignorable. So I would recommend you watch my YouTube video about RLS and give it a shot. And also, then let us know. I had restless leg syndrome. And now I don't. Yeah. Uh, it went away probably a year into eating clean, real whole food, meat-based keto and making sure I was taking my electrolytes, my minerals, magnesium, iodine, those things. And uh, unless I do something really stupid, it doesn't come back. Sophia, thank you. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm doing nothing. <laughs> Ignore me. Uh, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Morning, Dr. B and Nisha. I'm hearing more and more about girls starting cycles early. Any chance you talk about this? Yeah, and it, this is true. Uh, even back when, when you when were, was, yeah, when you were about to come into lady. womanhood, yes. what was the average age of your friends? It was starting to drop. It was, uh, I think, used to like when my mom, she was like, you know, this will happen when you're like 12, and then girls that were nine or ten started, uh, and gotcha. like the grades above me. And even in my grade and myself. Yep. And yeah, it was a very strange thing because I remember my mom saying this didn't happen when I was in school. Girls did not start like this early. Yep. This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's probably multifactorial. It's uh, almost assuredly the high carbohydrate inflammatory food that they're fed every single day at the, at the cafeteria and probably at home before they go to school. It's probably that they're carrying a hot, higher body fat percentage than Nisha was when she was in high school and definitely than her mother's um, cohort was when she was in high school. There were, there were like when I was in, in high school, when I was in eighth grade, ninth grade, there was literally one fat person that you would say, Oh, look, he's fat in a nice way. You wouldn't obviously judge, but you, you there now, if you, you look, it, it's, it's 30, 40, 50%. That kind of thing, that hormone disruption that comes from the extra adipose tissue or fat, that's going to muck with your hormones. And that's going to increase your risk of having PCOS starting sooner, having breast development way before you should start that. All those things are hormonally media, mediated. And when you muck up your hormones, stuff starts happening before it should. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's diet. It could be from the forever chemicals, the PFASs and other things. It could be from all the plastics. It's everything is wrapped in. Our friend, Dr. Anthony J wrote a book called Estrogeneration. And he's got a lot of research in that book. So you might want to check that out as well. It's an excellent question. I think it's all that and maybe a few more things we don't even know about. I think about that yet. is a subject that needs to be mm -hmm. given a little bit mm -hmm. more attention for sure. Maybe the, the American Academy of Pedi Pediatrics should focus on that instead of trying to do uh, gastric bypass surgery on 13-year-olds and put 12-year-olds on Adipex. Maybe they, anybody from the AAP watching, maybe focus on precocious puberty uh, in, in, in young women who are – not women. They're still little girls, yet they're starting puberty early. Maybe There's focus on that. a lot of things that are starting too yeah. early these days. AAP. Okay, we got 15 minutes left, so I need you to okay, let's go. get with Lightning it. Lightning round. Kelvin says, how can I choose a diet that's right for me? I've been recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and it's been hard for me. I'm 28 years old. For my diagnos diagnosis, I felt great and didn't know that I had yep. type 2. And this can happen. You can have it and not know it. So what you need to do is eat a low-carb enough diet so that you reverse your A1C back to normal. And this is entirely doable. Uh, I've got multiple videos on this YouTube channel that within three to tw three months to 12 months, you will no longer have type two diabetes. 
and you're welcome in advance. Just do what I say. It's easy, it's simple, it's cheap, and you'll reverse your type 2 diabetes. James, that's all you. Where can I go? Where where can I go to understand NMR lipid profile? Uh, LD, LP. Okay, so James, uh, I'll try to answer this quickly, but if for something like this, I need you in our private community so that you can post pictures of your labs and we can go over it in detail. And your A1C, exactly. Your A1C is great. Your uric acid's fine. ApoB, some docs would worry about that. Some wouldn't. Your insulin is 5.1. That's very, very good. Your trigs are 110. That's normal. Your HDL is 44. That's a smidge low. And then all the other numbers, if you want to get into those, uh, join our private community. There's a link in the show notes and we'll go over all that. Tired of looking for a name says stop subscription to the meat shipped in a box from down under. They trim the fat too yep, aggressively. I agree. And I think that is a crime to trim fat from meat of a grass fed animal. Amen. Amen. Man. Amen and huzzah. All right. Because your daddy 6'3 down from 272 to 235 in two months. Huzzah. Problem with electrolytes or not eating enough. Frequently faint feeling and need to sit. Also, tingling hands goes mm. away when I eat sometimes. Electrolytes. Uh, but I don't know if too many or too little. Yeah, probably not too many. You need to make sure you're getting plenty of salt, eating till you're comfortably stuffed. Don't portion control. Make sure you're getting plenty of electrolytes and plenty of daily minerals. Especially and you, salt. The tingling hands, you need to go see your doctor and get some blood work checked. Make sure and tell your doctor that sometimes your hands tingle for no reason. And that because that could be calcium or several other electrolytes. Ashley, I've been keto for a week in hopes to conceive after IUD removal a month ago. What's it fast for using keto board conceive also have fatty liver? Well, Ashley. Yes. I suffered with infertility, <clears throat> had to go through IVF. I uh, had just started keto around the time we went through IVF. Um, thought I couldn't get pregnant, went keto board. Uh, my son turned two and I said, I think we're done. I'm not going through IVF. Four weeks later, maybe. Uh, and we know many, many women who have this this story as well. We also have a good friend, Dr. Kiltz, K-I-L-T-Z, who has a YouTube and Instagram and a Facebook. He goes live nearly every single He's day. He's a fertility I specialist. was getting to that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and he specializes in meat-based uh, fertility treatment. <clears throat> That's Lily. So definitely go check him out. And uh, they also have a Facebook group that you can ask questions into. So go hang out with mm -hmm. Dr. Kiltz and he can fill <clears> you <throat> in on all the details about yep. getting that baby. Also, Ashley, with Ketovore, you're going to completely reverse your fatty liver within two to six months. It'll be gone. So you're at the right place. Three diglets. Diglets? Diglets? Okay. Can eliminating sugar from your diet help eliminate pathogens? Fully. Uh, it depends on which pathogens you're talking about and uh, how crippled, how inflamed, how metabolically sick you are. Um, absolutely, pathogens are not going to like your body as a place to live nearly as much when you cut the sugar out. But if you think you have pathogens, you may want to go see your doctor. Lily just brought her ball over here. She wants to play. This is Lily's favorite toy in the world. Yeah. Oh, you should see her face. Everybody's dog just went bananas. I apologize <laughs> for my husband. No. 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 No way. Lost 180 on the South Beach diet and 10 on carnivore. I'm otherwise healthy, but I have a slow resting heart rate of 53, resting and low blood pressure, only 20. So that may be completely normal. Uh, it's very common for people who are super healthy and down to a normal weight to have a resting heart rate in the 50s and a, and a blood pressure that looks very, very low, but it's completely normal. The way you know you're, if, it's, if it's pathologically low is if you're having symptoms of lightheadedness. You stand up fast and you get dizzy and you have to sit down. If that's the case, you need to see your doctor. But if you're like, no, none of that stuff happens. I feel great. Don't worry about it. It's normal. Being well with Brooke High, found I'm deficient in vitamin D and EBV, crazy high. Problem, I'm waking at 5 a.m. and can't go back to sleep. Been carnivore for one month, keto for two years. Yeah. So if you're deficient in vitamin D, I've got a video on this channel about vitamin D-rich foods. Eat those two or three times a week or to, and or take a vitamin D3 supplement, 5,000 units daily, and get your vitamin D rechecked in three months. Uh, the EBV being crazy high, as you continue carnivore, I think as you repeat that check, you're going to notice that that EBV number keeps getting better and better. 
the waking up at 5 a.m., many people on Carnival will notice that they seemingly don't need as much sleep. They'll wake up early, but full of energy, ready to go. She does this. I, on the other hand, I'm still like a teenage boy. I drag my ass out of bed. I'm like, oh, my God, I have to go get in the sun. I have to do some jumping jacks. I have to play with the kids, and it takes me an hour to wake up still to this day, just like when I was 16 and Granny Bear used to have to go into my bedroom and literally drag me out of the bed onto the floor to get me up to go to school. True story. Three diglets. Also, what do you think of hot sauce in a keto diet? Are there any keto friendly hot sauces you recommend? And if hot sauce is no good, can you explain why? Thanks. Hot sauce, uh, for the most part, is keto friendly. Check the back always on everything that comes in a package. But Absolutely. as long as it says peppers and vinegar and salt. And it's no sugar and low carb. Which is what would be true if it only said peppers and vinegar and salt on the back on the ingredients. Check the carb count. Uh, there are some hot sauces that add canola oil. So you got to be kind of aware of that. We use Frank's hot sauce. That's our favorite. Um, you can make your own hot sauce too if you're into that kind of thing. Lily really wants to say hi tonight. You guys want to see Lily, our American standard poodle? She's just a standard She's Tennessee standard. That's poodle. right. That's right. Come here, girl. Come on. Come on. This oh, is Lily. Lily. Look. Look. Say hi. Look. Say hi. Yeah. Yes. Here we go. Oh, yes. Here it is. Look at this. Look at that face. Okay. Now watch this. You ready? Oh, yo. Take off across the computer. <laughs> Lord. Yeah, I don't, I'm sorry, Lynn, about the commercials. I I will fix that. Uh, YouTube must need to make some extra money. Nope. Carnivore Climber, strict triple B and E since rotator cuff surgery six months ago. Doctor said this morning, I was fastest recovery he has ever seen. By the way, I'm 65. Thank you, Dr. Barry. Everybody listen to this. This is important. How did he heal so fast that his doctor was like, what the heck? Dude, I've never seen anybody heal like this. That's because meat and egg, fatty red meat, eggs with the yolk, seafood, they have every nutrient in them that you need to heal. So if any of you guys are trying to heal from surgery, you got surgery scheduled, you need to be eating. And you don't have to do BBBE, which is beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, but you can. And if you'll add in a little liver and a little seafood, you're going to heal quicker than anybody the surgeon's ever seen. That's a very good place to be. I would opine that that is the definition of good health, is that you heal very quickly. Kim, I'm 62, blood pressure 106 over 60. No, that's not too low unless you're having symptoms, Kim. So if you're lightheaded and dizzy, you stand up, you got to sit down, it may be too low. But if you're like, no, I feel fine, then no, that is a beautiful blood pressure. Been keto for six months. Met my weight goal of 130 pounds, A1C down to 6.1. So you reversed your type 2 diabetes. You're still pre-diabetic. So we got to keep doing this keto and keep your keto under 20 total grams of carbs a day, not net, so that you can get that A1C down under 5.7, and then you get a big fat huzzah! Oh, 100% Pamela. So Pamela, anybody with congestive heart failure or family member, they need to not eat a salt-free diet or even a low-sodium diet. There's actually research that shows that congestive heart failure gets worse if you're eating not enough salt. Salt your food to taste and eat plenty of fatty red meat. Your heart actually pumps more efficiently when it's burning ketones than when it's burning glucose. And many heart doctors don't know this yet, but the research is very clear about that point. That's physiology. That's not even breaking science. Myocytes, the heart muscle cells, pump better when they're burning ketones, when you're in ketosis, than when you're eating a high sugar diet and you've got high blood sugar. This one? Uh, before that, yes. since we're huzzahing a lot tonight, there will be huzzah t-shirts. They oh, are yes. the, they're designed. Yes. The, I think Autumn has to send something off to get the print so she can make them. They will be listed on the shopphd.com website. You can go check that There's out. Link in the show you notes. can get the PhD shirt, you can get the triple B and E shirt, and then in the next few weeks, you can get the Huzzah shirt, which I designed myself. Yep. Uh, the members of the private community will get access to that shirt first, and then it will be launched to the public. Nice. Alonzo Vega. I did the carnivore diet, only red meat, water, and salt. 
So that's actually uh, lion diets, sometimes with bacon. So carnivore diet. My blood results after a month came out with high uric acid. What should I do? So have had you had high uric acid in the past, Alonzo? Because many times doctors have never checked your, your uric acid. So you don't know if it was high or not. Also, having high uric acid is not always a bad thing. Your body uses uric acid as a antioxidant. It's actually used. Your body makes uric acid. It's not a poison like many doctors would make it out to be. And it also doesn't mean that you have gout if your uric acid is high. So if you're worried about gout, watch my YouTube video on this channel about gout. That will ease your mind. A carnivore diet is not going to do anything bad to your physiology, Alonzo. Mary. Oh, Mary. Okay. Mary Dinkle, can carnivore help with the central tremors? Maybe, Mary. Many neurological conditions improve markedly on keto, ketovore, or carnivore. I would recommend you eat a higher fat uh, carnivore. And uh, you may notice that your essential tremor becomes less severe, less noticeable. Okay. All of us have an essential tremor. If you've read about it much, Mary, you know that. But yours is just really bad. But you may notice that the free, the, 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 not the free, the amplitude of your tremors get much less noticeable on a, a fatty carnivore diet. PJ Burke, please comment for me, please. Thank you. This is roll call. Hey, Zero. Thank hey, you. Thank you. Kane. Kane. Nisha, why can't Dr. Barry wear flip flops? Oh, Haha. Answered that. Okay. Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Walter. Walter. Thank you, Deborah. T cap. Tcap ship, Tcap ship. Recently diagnosed with antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. Have you heard of uh, carnivore diet PhD resolving this autoimmune disorder? So I don't think that eating a carnivore diet or, or proper human diet is going to cure your APA syndrome, but I think it is going to lessen the severity of the symptoms and lessen the frequency of flare-ups. Gail. Hey, Gail. I use stainless steel and cast iron cookware. That's beautiful. Please, none of you guys cook in Teflon or plastic. Never, never do that. We use a ceramic. Yes. Clean ceramic. But I'm wondering about the safety of a chaffle maker or an espresso machine. And, and that's a good question if you're worried about microplastics, nanoplastics, and other things. Uh, we actually switched to a, what do we have? We used to use the kind that had plastic cups, no, a Keurig, an and we, we've switched to Nespresso because it doesn't have plastic cups. Listen. Is that a huge deal? Maybe, maybe not. What listen, do you think? Listen, listen. Cut, you know, what are you going to be obsessed about? And what do you like? The 80, he says 80 20. This is getting 90, 90 10 yeah. to this point. Not that it, you shouldn't care about those things, but I say if you haven't eaten this way consistently, for a year, you haven't done a 90 diet day carnivore triple B and E elimination diet challenge, or, or like if you haven't hit those steps, this maybe isn't like you shouldn't maybe worry yeah, about. I this heard a good yet. thing at KetoCon. You don't want to you don't want to major in, in the, the minors. minors. There you go. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and and I'm not yelling at you, Gail. I'm just no, saying no. focus on the most yes. important things. Fix the most important things first. thoroughly first and thoroughly. And permanently, then you can start to worry about the 1% and the 2% and 3% problems. But make sure, Gail, you fix the 80% problems first. And so this may be a problem, but this is probably not your main problem. And if you want to get rid of your Nespresso, you can gift it to a friend. Um, yep. What I use besides Nespresso, if I, if I was on the days where I'm not lazy, Nespresso is just too convenient for yep. me at this time. Super I'm not convenient. giving it up. Uh, French press mm -hmm. Love it. and a per percolator on Good the old stove percolator. make wonderful coffee and have very, very minimal amounts of plastic in the build. Absolutely. Hey, thank you, VJ. Smedley Butler the third. Been carnivore for six weeks, no slip ups. But yesterday evening, I fell victim to five daughters' donuts in East Nashville. Sugar is a racket. I totally agree. And that's hilarious. The, the Smedley Butler in the racket. That's good. I like that. Thank you for that. Five daughters. Yeah, Woo! yeah, yeah. So donuts are that. always a mistake. Always. Okay. Even uh, the ones that have bacon on top. Yeah. If you want to have a donut for your birthday or anniversary, fine. Have one a year. But if you're going to smash a bunch of donuts, you are harming your health. Absolutely. I'm fixing to do a bit. Well, here, before we get off here, I need to tell you, I'm fixing to do a bunch of videos on my channel that you're going to want to watch. One of which is called, you should cheat on your diet. 
Mm, I like that. And this is, yes, I, you're going to want to see this video. So go to her channel as soon as this is over and subscribe and hit that little bell notification. Also do that here if you haven't done that. Uh, and then but, I just posted, well, it's going to go live either in the morning or tonight about the channels that I watch for my health here on YouTube. Guess who's not on the list? Who? You. <sighs> channel i live with him she has to hear that all the time but there's some good ones on there so yeah. if you're not subscribed to my channel i do what i eat in a day vlog sometimes i even show what dr barry eats it's the same thing every day it's just yep. ground beef and yep. ground beef and eggs and, and ground beef yep. and thank you so much for joining us if you did not get your question answered please consider becoming part of our private community there's a link in the show notes we have four additional live q and a's in there a week we have multiple moderators and advisors who can answer your questions if you're just getting started with this. There's a huge community of people just like you who are basically taking each other by the arm and saying, hey, come on, I used to have that same problem you got. It's gone now. Let me show you what I did. That's what our community is about. And yeah. it's pretty freaking special. We try our best to answer every single message every Monday Night Live. But with 4,000 people watching, it is very hard. We're sorry if we missed your question. I uh, Hope you will be back next Monday, or we hope to see you in the group. We love you. We mean it. Yes, and good night to you, my friend.